Hey everybody, Joel here, Blizzard's product specialist. Welcome to our multi-part video tutorial on our Epic console, the Enigma M4. We'll be walking you through all the ins and outs of the console to help you get completely familiarized with it. So, without further ado, let's take a look. The Enigma comes shipped in this beautiful ATA spec road case. This will ensure that your console will be protected for many years to come. The bottom of the case comes with rubber feet, so you can use your console on the go without having to fully take out of the case. Four lockable latches will keep your console secure when not in use, and the top of the case easily opens to unveil a console. Inside your case, you will find the following accessories included with the Enigma. Ever so handy and necessary power cable, a USB to MIDI adapter for controlling your console with MIDI, USB light for illuminating your console in the dark, and this extremely high quality 5 cent stylus. Finally, a user manual that you've probably already thrown out since you're watching these videos instead. Let's get started by looking at the rear of the console and familiarizing you with its layout. The rear panel has a protected power switch to prevent you from accidentally turning off the unit, a one amp fuse holder, and a power con input. Next we have two physical DMX outputs for universe one and two, MIDI in and out, a microphone and a quarter inch jack for audio triggering of cues. Finally, we have a RJ45 port for ArtNet connectivity. This will give you up to four universes total to be able to be used. This handy dandy little feature is an RFID tag. With your Android enabled device or with an app from the App Store, this will allow you to access all of these videos as well as software upgrades right on your phone. Now that we've plugged the power in and turned it on, Let's get the important stuff out of the way. Like picking a color scheme for our buttons. We recommend using one of the two color schemes versus a single color because this gives you the ability to see active playbacks and buttons. I prefer to use the yellow with red highlight scheme, but pick whatever your little heart desires. You have nine incredible options that can be chosen by simply holding the shift button and tapping the through button. The locate button, when double tapped, brings selected fixtures to their default open values. Just above the attribute keys, there is the even odd key, which toggles your selection between even and odd numbered fixtures, and the find button, which will reselect all your originally selected fixtures. The store key is to be used for fast backups during long programming sessions. Each press of this key will automatically save to one of the four rotating backup files on the console's built-in memory. This is different from the backup key, which we will get to in a moment. Keep in mind that the oldest autosave file is automatically overwritten each time this button is pressed. Next, we have the function keys. Starting with keyboard, Press this key anytime you need the touchscreen keyboard to enter alpha numeric values. The backup button takes you to the save window on the touchscreen where you can save and name your show as well as load and save from an external memory. The setup key accesses the setup window where you can change the console's default settings. The save to queue button will save your programming to a queue or playback. The edit playback and edit preset buttons let you make changes to previously saved queues and presets. And finally, the patch button is where you will choose your fixtures and assign them to a specific DMX universe and address. Moving on to the select section. This is where you can store 20 pages of 20 keys of each type of group, fixture, preset, effect, macro, and fixed. Using the up and down arrows will switch pages and the console will remember which page you are on as you switch between the different selection types. 
The touch screen will track along with the arrow keys as well. On the lower half of the console is the cue playback section. In this section, you have the master fader and the blackout key, which control the master level of all of your fixtures and playback faders. Directly above the master are arrow keys, which will toggle between 40 pages of 15 playbacks each. Every playback has a top button to select a playback and a bottom button, which acts as a go or bump button. Finally, we have the numeric keypad at the lower right of the console. You can use this to select fixtures and type in all numerical data. The plus and minus buttons are used to increase and decrease your intensity by 10% while programming or locating each fixture. The exit key is used to exit out of any window brought up by the function keys. The off key is used to turn off effects, fixtures, and playbacks. The move and copy keys can be used with a group, preset, or playbacks to move them into different slots. The delete key is used to remove a particular piece of data from your show. This allows you to completely eliminate a programmed playback and or any of the 20 keys from the select area. 